What's up, Modern Setters? Today is gonna to be a head scratching kind of day. We got a lot of custom work we need to get figured out for the outdoor kitchen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These panels right here are from some sliding glass doors, and we're gonna make them work for the front and for side windows on the outdoor kitchen. They measure 48 inches this way and 93 and a quarter inches this way. Let me draw a picture of what the plans are. I'm gonna figure out the side walls today. So this is the side of the outdoor kitchen. This is gonna be the front. We wanna come down halfway. Have this all boards. And have a window panel here that we can slide into this part. So this will be a window, but then we can slide it and have it open on both sides. We'll have a good cross breeze. In the front, we want to be able to have it so we can have a, most of it glass and be able to open quite a bit of it. The front is southern exposure, so we're going to get a lot of light in if we can figure this all out and get it to work. Fingers crossed. We didn't design the outdoor kitchen. We already had the outdoor kitchen designed in our head and the slab poured before we got these glass panels, but these glass panels are gonna work awesome if we can get them to work. So we just gotta figure it out. Let's go over and figure out the layout on the concrete slab. Now I am a visual learner and when I'm building stuff, I can see it in my head, but it works a lot better for me if I can figure out the layout and get a better picture. This is just how I learn and how I build. So 93 and a quarter is right here. Let's see what we will have left over for a solid wall. So we have 84 and a half left over. That will be a good size wall. We'll have a lot of light coming in too. So now that we have that figured out, we've got to manufacture some beams that the glass doors can slide through. I'm thinking this is going to be pretty neat once it's all said and done. It might be a little tricky to figure out. It's going to be unique and one of a kind. And that kind of goes with my personality, I think. It fits us here at Lumna Acres and the modern steaders. So we're using all rough sawn lumber here. So I went to the real lumber yard. Well, I guess it's not a real lumber yard. I went to the real sawmill and picked up some rough sawn 2x6s. I was real handy with my chainsaw. I could take my 6x6 six six posts that I already have cut to length and notch them out for these doors to be able to slide through. But I'm not, and I'm not going to tempt it. I know my limits. I did my figuring right. We should be able to get both of our beams out of this. This is just over 8.5 feet. On this side for the front is going to be just under eight feet, so it's a 16 foot board. If I figured everything correctly, we should be able to get them all out of there. Oh, we're gonna have just enough. Awesome. four of them at 92 inches long, so I'm just going to keep two piles going. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. I wanted to thank you, the Modern Steaders, for that. When we get to 10,000 subscribers, we're going to be doing some pretty awesome giveaways. Not a giveaway, but we're going to give away three different things. So if you guys want to help us get to 10,000 subscribers sooner, go ahead and share this video. Mrs. Pigs, you're all dirty again. Are you having fun in the mud? Yep. Don't touch the fence, you'll regret it. You girls are doing a good job. Keep it up.
Now that we have our four cut to a hundred and a half inches, I need two of them at 48 inches long. two by six pieces cut. We're gonna build our own beam. So we're gonna need three pieces of wood. We're gonna square up our edges and flush up our sides being rough sawn lumber. They're most likely not all gonna be the same width and they're not, which is fine. It'll be the on the inside of the wall. We won't end up seeing it anyways once we're all done with the project. Now that we got the first two screwed together, I'm going to put the last one on top. I'm going to need a spacer. Square everything up, flush it up. I had to shim these up because I want to make sure I have the right thickness in between here to get my glass panel to go through it. Now these are not all, they were all two inches thick, these two by sixes. It would have worked out perfectly, but being rough sawn, they're about inch and three quarter from the mill that we got them from. You had to make up just around a quarter of an inch thickness with these shingles. Now tomorrow I'll put more nails in it, but for today I'm just going to screw it. That way if I got to move anything around or adjust anything, it's not loaded with nails. I can just back out a few screws and we can make our adjustments. So now to cut my shingles, I'm just going to score them a couple of times right on the edge with a razor knife. Now I'm just going to repeat the same process for the next beam. We have our mark this way of where our post base needs to go. We're just going to set it back an inch and a half from the edge of the concrete. To hold this post base in the ground, we're just going to use an inch and a half long concrete nails and using our set driver. You want to make sure you have air protection. Put your nail in to your set driver. Get a little rubber piece, set it in. We got the one with the washers. Then you have your blanks. The bullet, but without a bullet, it's just gunpowder. Load it in. This is just a this is a slide hammer. We're gonna set it in place. We're gonna take our hammer and give it a good solid whack. Boom, just like that, nice. Gonna remeasure everything and make sure nothing moved on us. Inch and a half, inch and a half. I like that, we're gonna do it all over again. Open it up. Your blank comes out. I like putting my nail in first. So that way if I'm putting my nail in and I have the gunpowder in here, I don't accidentally ram it and then set this off. So I put my nail in and then I put my load in. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line up our nail And that just securely holds it in place. Mrs. Pig's hot at work. Hopefully she's not finding any truffles for herself to eat. Right, Mrs. Pig's? How is it? Is that good?
Yeah, well, that's perfect. We're not going to screw the top in yet. We're going to leave that free just in case we need to make any adjustments with it tomorrow. We secured the bottom so we don't got to worry about it falling over on us. Our glass pocket window will be able to slide right through here nicely. That's just a spacer to hold the boards apart the width we need them for now. That'll be coming out once we secure the top to this outside post. We got the second post base lined up where we want it. Put a nail in. We gotta put our charge in. Line it up. Dud. To retry it, I guess. Let's try it again. I don't know what happened if it hit a rock or what. Or if it's just a bad load. Let's try it again. There. That one did it. Just want to remeasure it. Load it back up. Do it all over again. Nice. I'm gonna leave the top loose again. I just wanna make sure it's close to level for now. Might be hard to tell on the camera, but it's, the bubble is off to the line to the right a smidge. But before we go to tighten that up up there with a screw, that's when we can really level it off. But this is good and close for now, so tomorrow we can get it all, the doors put in, get this all adjusted, and get it all straightened out and finished off. So I don't know if you can visualize it yet, but this top, almost four feet down, will be a big picture window. Underneath that will be a knee wall. All back there will be a wall. So you'll have window, wall. On this side, wall, wall, window. That's what we're trying to have happen anyways. We'll see if everything comes together and all our parts and pieces work together. Stay tuned till tomorrow. We got our two pocket window upright posts made and in. We're gonna leave the top of the post loose for now until we install the sliding windows. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping the channel grow. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, so if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now's a perfect time. And as soon as we hit 10,000, we'll be doing a few giveaways. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.